Paul Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the north, more specifically, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and even more specifically than that, we are in front of the Senator John Hines History Center here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Senator John Hines, the first husband of Teresa Hines Carey, the wife of Senator John Carey. She's married to two different senators, and of course the Hines in Senator John Hines is the same Hines in Hines Ketchup, a family of ketchup tycoons. But anyways, there is a history museum named after Senator John Hines, and one thing that brought this to my attention is there's actually an exhibit on Mr. Rogers, a, a fairly um, comprehensive exhibit, it appears. So very excited about seeing that, and very excited about what else we may find in the Senator John Hines History Center. So please, follow me. see a football goal post out here in front of the building and it uh, looks like there may be a sports museum integrated in with the History Center. Here we go, there's the man himself, Mr. Fred Rogers. We'll be checking out his exhibit here in a little bit. So we enter the History Center here, you see the steel beams, of course Pittsburgh known for their steel. have a streetcar here, and the uh, conductor's telling us to hop aboard. It looks like we can actually step inside the streetcar here. I guess right here is where we would pay our toll. And check Pardon out the streetcar. Over here we have a stainless steel Ford sedan matching along with the steel theme of Pittsburgh. Then we have this giant cannon here pointed towards the food court. Here's an old Heinz cart to go along with the uh, Heinz History Center. Looks like they're transporting some delicious Heinz beans up there. And here is one of the racer cars, the roller coaster at Kennywood, one of my favorite amusement parks. And then the old uh, cutout that tells you how tall you have to be to ride the racer. Looks like there's five stories at this museum, so let's head on up. And here's the Western Pennsylvania Sports Museum that they mentioned outside. There's some sports tools in these boxes. And then we have a wax figure of this uh, football player here getting ready. Oh, it looks like he's getting ready to maybe kick the football. This is uh, Franco, Franco Harris right there, getting ready to kick that ball. You can see the determination in his eyes. Here's a female boxing national championship held by Tika Hemingway. Apparently the winning starts here. So we follow footprints here. Where are we going? So some sort of Pittsburgh themed sports room in here. Included in the sports memorabilia is this old penny farthing bicycle. And here we are asked the eternal question, is it sport? I guess these are things that are uh, up in the air, whether or not they're considered sport. Is ultimate frisbee sport? Is marbles sport? Is fox hunting sport? Is throwing an atlatl sport? You know what? I say it is sport. Some outboard motor racing. 
here is an outboarding racing simulator where you ride the boat here in to this other guy. And unfortunately, I am above the weight limit, but we can still watch it go. So just press this button to ride the boat. And there we go, see the boat galloping through the waves. There's something called harness racing, where I guess you strap this to the horse like a one-person chariot, and these are the these are the clothes that you would wear while uh, doing this activity. Now here's an exhibit on a sport that I've never heard of: boch, bochi, b-o-c-c-e, bochi. I'm, I'm I'm probably wrong, but I'm gonna go with bochi for now. And you can actually play a little bit of bochi. You uh, apparently throw these larger balls to try to get it closer to the smaller ball. Yeah, you, the, the little small ball is called a polino. So, okay, we roll our bochi towards the polino. Let's get a good bochi here. and see how close we can get it to the polino. Ah, seems pretty close. This is Bill Mazeroski. He played in the World Series. He played for the Pittsburgh team, which is known as the Pirates. You can see him getting ready to crack that ball into the sky. In the golf section, you have different golf balls cut open. These are all different varieties of golf balls. This is a feathery golf ball. And you have the magnifying glass. You can see the outside and then the inside of the golf ball. I don't know why there is a, a top hat, though, in the middle of the table. Sometimes I think that my favorite part of sports are the mascots. Look at this cool guy, he's angry. Ooh, look at that mean lion. Almost. A little nutrition section here in the sports section. And here we have five pounds of fat. This is what, five pounds of human fat. It's like, look at the fat, look at it jiggle. So when you lose five pounds of fat, that's how much you're losing. Probably not all in one place. It's probably not as much once it's spread out through your whole body, but still, you don't want that in you, do you? I don't know. Here we have professional baseballer, Josh Gibson. Next up, we head into Pittsburgh, a tradition of innovation. This is Lola the Stegosaurus. She is part of a community art project where they put different dinosaurs around Pittsburgh that celebrated different parts of Pittsburgh history. I actually do remember seeing another one of these. They have a T-Rex dressed like Mr. Rogers that I saw a few years back. But uh, this Stegosaurus here has different pictures from things all around Pittsburgh, including chopped chipped ham. Here we have an early Pittsburgh innovator crafting tools. Here is Seneca Native American leader, Queen Aliquipa. We have a beaver pelt. I guess we're welcome to feel the soft beaver fur there. And here we have an old whiskey still, because of course, every good museum has to have some form of whiskey still. Here we have Meriwether Lewis planning his trip out west with his good friend Clark. Here we have some pioneer life. There's a woman cooks by the cabin stove. And here we found ourselves at a crossroads. We have uh, 18th century where we just came from. We could head into the 19th century. And then onward over here, head into the 20th century. Well, I guess we should do an order and check out uh, 19th century first. Well, hello there. It's a nun. This here is Dog Jack. He is a dog that actually uh, worked with uh, the Union soldiers. And it said Dog Jack was actually captured by the Confederates, but traded back to the Union in exchange for a Confederate soldier. That's a good dog. See this woman manufacturing 
bullets there to be used in the war. A horse right here, a Union horse. This is Martin Robinson Delaney. He was a abolitionist and black activist who would go on to be a major in the Union Army. Now I did not realize this, but this makes sense. The designer of the Ferris wheel, John Ferris, was actually a bridge maker in uh, Pittsburgh, designed the massive Ferris wheel that was at the uh, Chicago World's Columbian Exposition in 1893. I know, I think it, it actually was way behind schedule and didn't appear till later in the fair, but yeah, the very first Ferris wheel, you can see actually had very large cars to it that would hold a big quantity of people in a single car. I'm out in the alley here. Oh, look at that, we got an outhouse as well with a Sears Roebuck catalog next to the hole. There's a dagger that was used in an attempt to assassinate steel baron Henry Frick, who said he was shot and stabbed with this knife. Not shot with the knife. He was shot with a different, with a, with a gun, and then stabbed with this knife. Here's Andrew Carnegie, the uh, steel baron, who uh, created a lot of things here in Pittsburgh, including a natural history museum, which you can see from the dinosaur bone right there. You actually still visit uh, the Carnegie Museum of Natural History, and it is a really good it is a really good museum. And we have here Electro, the Moto Man. You can see here he was a robot debuted at the 1939 New York World Fair. He was a walking, talking robot. He even had his own little dog, Sparko here, Sparko the dog. But Electro said he could. He could tell the difference between red and green. He could count to 10 on his fingers. And for some reason, some unknown reason, um, Electro could actually smoke cigarettes. So uh, all this space age technology making artificial intelligence and we train him to smoke cigarettes. <laughs> Electro, I think you're great, but you need to quit smoking. Here's the insides of Electro there, and yes, you can see, smoke, smoking a cigarette. Here we have jazz musician Mary Lou Williams playing the piano. Here's journalist Frank E. Bolden Jr. Definitely love how the museum here actually does function as almost a sort of wax museum. In addition, has the different wax figures of a lot of the famous people here in uh, Pittsburgh's history. And we, here we have one of the most iconic figures in all of pop culture, Rosie the Riveter, the famous We Can Do It picture, and she flexes her bicep. There's an exhibit on polio, one of the polio vaccines here, as well as an adult leg brace, just uh, to rem remind you how amazing um, the polio vaccine was and how remarkable vaccines have been for human health. An exhibit here on the Pennsylvania Turnpike. You can see the toll booth right there and this very happy family driving right towards me. Oh man, this family is really excited about their Pennsylvania vacation. We have a living room, television set from the uh, 1950s. We have a mid-century kitchen right here. Looks like they're having a feast of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and oranges. This talks about Dr. Peter Safar, who was the father of CPR. You can see a Rissusa baby there. That's a baby that you would practice doing CPR on. From Pittsburgh to the moon, you see the space astronaut right there. Here's the machete carried by the astronauts, also known as the space knife. There's a camera used to film on the moon. Oh, look at this. Got some sort of robot over here. It says, 
Pittsburgh Ease, English as Spoken in Pittsburgh. Press the play button. History is everywhere in Pittsburgh, including our speech. When a Pittsburgh Wait a minute. Speech, Are you a robot or are you just a, a television holder? Okay, this is a robot known as Joe History Bot. It says that these robots were placed around Pittsburgh to educate people and they did talk and move at one point, but it was determined that uh, they were too expensive to maintain. So now he just sits here holding a uh, TV and I guess the TV teaches you how to talk like you're from Pittsburgh. Nebby? He knows it. More than usually curious. Our neighbors are so nebby. So you know what we say is a curse. Our neighbors are so nebby. Well, thank you for the lesson, Mr. Joe History Bot. And here is a Ford self-driving test vehicle. I don't know what to think about self-driving cars. In one way, the idea horrifies me. As cars drive around with no regard for human life. But at the same time, uh, it'd be really great if I could like rest or edit videos while I was in the car. This cool neon sign here says, Klein's Fine Liquor Steaks and Chops. It's got that cool lobster on the sign. Now, as this is the John Hines History Center, we do have an exhibit on the Hines Corporation, as can be seen by the giant ketchup bottle here in the center. As you can sit on these smaller ketchup stools and admire the giant ketchup bottle here in the center. Let's see this young boy here selling vegetables, saying that the whole Hines company started as a uh, produce stand where they sold all these wonderful vegetables. Talks here about the innovations that Heinz made in uh, producing products and packaging. Talks about uh, the fact they started making the ketchup bottles upside down so that uh, the ketchup would come out easier. They also invented green ketchup, which was a horrible idea. <laughs> And I do like these down here, the larger ketchup packets. I hate the tiny little ketchup packets, so I like the little bigger one that they, uh, that they designed there. A section on advertising here, the famous Heinz 57 that's in their name, said that uh, originally that they wanted to put uh, the number of how many products they made, but once they reached 57, Heinz decided he liked that number the best and decided to just go with it because he thought it sounded good. Some of the old bits of advertising here. This big jar of olives that would be displayed in, uh, to advertise Heinz products. But I think this is my favorite. This little guy wearing a top hat and a monocle riding a ketchup bottle. I don't know, he always, he, in some ways he seems very similar to Mr. Peanut, but uh, definitely love that figure there. So the giant pickle hanging right there. Here we have another piece that has the uh, tomato mascot. Apparently just known as the aristocratic tomato. See a ketchup bottle bowling set. And unfortunately, this is sad, and this may be a reason I have to return to this museum someday. It says Charlie the Tuna uh, temporarily removed. Apparently they had a Charlie the Tuna costume hanging right there. Dang it. We have to come back and see it sometime. See a lot of advertising focused around the pickles. Not really known for pickles today as much as they were back then. See that little girl there in the pickle costume. And that, that, that little pickle, little pickle trike right there. And this is absurdly amazing. This is a little package that would be carried around by pickle salesmen so that they could show off the different sizes of pickles before they sold them. It's just, that's so funny. Like, oh, let me break out the pickle display. Let's look at how big of a pickle you're interested in. Oh, those were the days. Now these would be items that would be seen in restaurants. You have the Heinz soup kitchen. I guess you would take the, the can of soup off there, crack it open with this can opener, 
and then put it into these uh, these, these metal cups for heating. And also you got the big old uh, big old bean warmer there that would keep Heinz beans nice and warm. We have tomatoes coming out of the ketchup bottle there and descending in to the farmer's basket. Actually, now that I think about it, I think the, the tomatoes are, are rising out of the farmer's basket in to the ketchup bottle. The exhibit here called From Slavery to Freedom. You actually enter this exhibit through a giant shackle, symbolically the African slaves shackled and dragged to America against their will. So we see the slave right there. Shows how the African slaves were stacked up in horrible conditions. You can see one of the uh, men stacked up there. Talks about the sugar plantations they're forced to work at. This is Martin Delaney. We actually saw a different figure of him downstairs in the uh, Civil War section, but he was a major uh, abolitionist and uh, advocate for black rights. It shows how free black people in the North actually fought for the Union Army. So they have a visible storage section here in this museum, which is pretty cool. A lot of some of the, the coolest things in museums are in storage, but uh, they, can't, they don't fit into any current exhibits, so the, they're out of the public's eye. So apparently they store their stuff visibly here, which is amazing. See this tiny, tiny little car. And oh, look at this. Look at this over here. We got a, uh, a bumper car. Yeah, so always some cool stuff that people never see in museums. I absolutely love the idea of just leaving it open and letting people walk through it. This is kind of like shows the behind the scene workings of a museum. Almost a museum of museums, if you will. Oh, that's a really cool chair. Collection of paintings over here various hats in this section, furniture section over here. Oh, you can see they have some toys here. Got some old teddy bears down there. Some vintage appliances over here. Yeah, when I worked in a museum, I always wished I could just take people in the back and show them some of just the random cool things in the museum, some of the things that people don't normally see. So yeah, I absolutely love this idea. It's amazing. Here is the photo, here's the photo lab where they would use to take pictures of museum artifacts. Look in there, you can see the different forms that they put clothing on them, a little setup with lights where they can uh, set, set up an artifact to be photographed. I actually did some photographing of objects when I worked in the museum. And here's where they do mount making. A little workshop here where they can mount artifacts like these football and uh, baseballs are, are mounted. See the car up here, we're on the fourth floor. As this elevator here shows, they actually can transport large objects such as vehicles up here to the top floors of the museum. Now this is the reason I initially came here. This is the actual set from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. This is where uh, Fred Rogers would do his children's show. So you actually have the wax figure of Mr. Rogers removing his shoes. He'd always come in, change his jacket, change his sneakers as he came into his home and this would actually be the set that was used and this uh, screen here this television screen was actually picture picture he would use this to show different things on his show and there we have an authentic pair of his sneakers and one of his iconic sweaters there as well and honestly, like, standing here, looking at this, the castle, 
from uh, the land of make-believe. I honestly get a little choked up looking at this. You think about how many times I saw this as a child on television and how many different children around the world saw this charming show, these charming puppets. Wow. This is it. This is the actual castle. You can see a replica of King Friday there sitting in the castle. And here we have some puppets used by Fred Rogers on the show. Always so charming. Like so, you know, the puppets were so like homemade. You know, all you could you could hear his voice coming through all the puppets. But uh, one of the longest running shows on television entertained children for literal generations. It's uh it's amazing the work the work he did and the impact he had on the world around him. Here's the great oak tree it was home to X the Owl and Henrietta Pussycat. See the human actor would come up here to the tree where the puppets would come out and interact with them. Wow, it's crazy seeing this. Some smaller items from the show. See the Owl Correspondence School right there. Some little puppet costumes. And then this is Mr. McFeely, the, the postman. This is his uh, tricycle. Section here asks, what is it? See some unusual items here. I know this is like a hair curler. I've seen these in museums where they're, they're curled. These things are curled around women's hair. There's also some quackery equipment in here. This strap that would just like shake you and you would think that you were being exercised, but you really weren't. And I think that's some more quackery there. Those, there's some glass shapes that hook to electricity and are inserted in your body. Some other items here, such as this lock of hair that's labeled George Washington's hair. And it says that they, they, they tried to determine whose hair it was, but uh, they could not due to uh, the age and, 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 and various factors. But it says it le legitimately could be George Washington's hair. It says that it was determined to uh, be of a red color. Now, did George Washington have red hair? I, I almost feel like I've heard that somewhere. Yeah, it looks like this section is just an extension of storage where you have really cool items that may not fit necessarily into a full exhibit. Let's just rosebud right there. Love these vintage Halloween costumes, always very cool. It's the monkey lift. It's like a arcade game where you actually pull that up to try to get the monkey to go up higher. This is the check and Slovak section here. You can see these Czech and Slovak puppets there. Looks like a little skeleton there. And is that, is that who I think it is? Is that, is that Krampus? Some African-American artifacts over here. It's a really cool velvet painting. That doll right there. On the top floor here, we have a section on the French-Indian War. This is George Washington after his defeat at the Great Meadows. And yeah, he does look very defeated. This is John Bush, who was a soldier from Massachusetts. And the French soldier burning his flag here rather than hand it over to the British. And this is a soldier, Jack Tar, who is uh, toasting in triumph. It's July 3rd, 1754, and the French... And from there, we head into World War II. And look at this. We got a second Rosie the Riveter. A second wax figure of Rosie the Riveter in the same museum. Here we have Lieutenant... Carl Woods. There we have General George C. Marshall mapping up some plans there. And 
And here we exit through the gift shop. Here is some Pittsburgh merchandise here. We have a, a pretzel man. There is a smiling sandwich right there and a fried egg. And this is a dog toy, but what sort of food item is that? Is that pierogi? Got some Mr. Rogers merch right there. The trolley. And then down here, there's a pennant that says, it's cool to be kind. Here we have some Heinz merchandise. A little tomato there. Various kawaii animals. Guzzling ketchup. There we have stuff with the Heinz Pickle logo on it. Now, here's a terrible towel. I, uh, this is something to do with uh, sports in Pittsburgh. I think they like to shake their towel in the air. So thank you for joining me here today at the Senator John Heinz History Center here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And yes, absolutely breathtaking. It made me be well up to see the uh, Mr. Rogers sets and artifacts. But I just wanted to say, as a, as a museum, as a whole, this museum is really beautiful. I, I, it, is a, it is a model museum in the sense that I love how the exhibits are set up. I love the look and feel of the museum. And I do love the little peek behind the curtain they give you where they show you their storage area. They show you how they do museum things. I've never seen a museum that, that got quite in depth on that, on how a museum works behind the scenes. I said I've worked in a small museum before, so I got a little peek of that when I worked there. But really cool to see the inner workings of the museum. Maybe, maybe very first in the in a, the the museum of museums that I've always envisioned in my brain. But anyways, thank you so much. Uh, please subscribe if you like these videos. I travel around the country filming roadside attractions, amusement parks haunted houses, museums, and other fun, whoop, almost tripped there, almost other fun things. Uh, if you'd like to help support the channel, consider contributing to Patreon, $3 or more. We'll get you a postcard once a month. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop. All that information is in the description of this video. And all that helps go to keep this train on the track, this boat on the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.